Hi, I hope you're all well. In today's video, we're going to be talking about which camera is the right camera for me. So whenever my friends are looking to buy a camera, whether it be film or digital, they always ask me, James, what's the best camera to buy? And to that I say, yes. Because in all matter of truth, there isn't such thing as the best camera. I mean, you could argue it's like the DM50 or the A7R4 or something like that, but pfft. For most normal people, there is no such thing as the best camera. There is only really the best camera that fits your needs as much as possible. So I always say to someone, what is it you actually want in a camera? Is it, does it have to be lightweight? Are you after resolution? Um, is there a certain mount you want? Um, do you need like high speed burst or is it just for casual snapping, you know? Um, most people, when I ask, I say, you know, do you want full frame or crop? And they go, well, so to most people, that doesn't even matter. For me, whenever I'm recommending cameras, I always look for two things. One, what are their needs? And two, what is the best value I can get them? Now, first of all, let's talk about value. Value doesn't necessarily mean cheap. But what it does mean is you're getting a lot for your money. And that's what I always strive for when I'm buying something. That's why I still use a 2011 MacBook Pro. I paid £650 for it, a year old, second hand, and it's still working to this day, as you can see. Now, today I'm specifically going to be talking about film cameras. What is the best film camera for me? Now, I've owned a lot of film cameras over the last four or five years. Here is most of them, and today I'm going to kind of talk about some that I've picked up on a whim, some that I've kind of just bought because I thought they were pretty, uh, or bits of projects that I thought I could work on, and others that I use regularly. So, first of all, I'm going to go through the cameras that I don't use, and at the moment are just glorified shelf ornaments. Uh, starting off with what I think is the most amusingly named camera, it's the Olympus Pen EES. That's right, I'm a child. Um, this one is lovingly clad in sparkly pink. Uh, my friend Ian gave this to me. He got it in a job lot of cameras. He sent me the photo and I immediately saw like the shape of this. I was like, oh, it's an Olympus. And at the time, I mean, I still love Olympus cameras. Who doesn't? They're wonderful. Um, but I homed in on this. I was like, oh my God, I'll buy that off you. He was like, he just gave it to me because he paid like £30 for the box. So... Olympus Pen EES. This is a half frame little camera, point and shoot jobby, selenium meter, um, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, this is a cool little camera, and this is just a nice little pocket thing. It has three focus areas. It's got like person, three people, and mountain. You know, that kind of dealio. It's just a three setting thing. It's super simple. But yeah, this is just a nice little shelf piece. It's really cute. I love it. Uh, great bit of design, fantastic bit of engineering. Seeing as we're on Olympus, I also have an Olympus XA2. This is a zone focusing camera, it's the same as that, so you've got people, taller people, mountain. Uh, it's the zoning scale for this, so it's not a true rangefinder, unlike its original Olympus XA brother. Uh, this was gifted to me by my uncle and auntie, it was my uncle's old camera, he just doesn't use it anymore, and uh, I haven't managed to get it working, which upsets me, because uh, I really want to give this a go. Moving on, we move to a Nikon. This is my Nikon F50. Again, this was gifted to me by my friend Ian. This was in the job lot of cameras he got, the same as the, the Olympus Pen EES. And uh, this is an interesting camera. Um, it, it actually works really nicely. It's got a very loud shutter, uh, very loud advance. So everything about this camera is loud. I'll just do that again. Obviously, that was a shutter speed of one sixth of a second, by the way. So, um, everything about this camera is loud. It's clunky. It's weird because it's in. it was like an early 90s camera. So, to do your aperture and shutter speed, you've got four buttons on the top. Um, and when you're using it, it's very, very awkward and very difficult to use. You can't just use the aperture ring, like, say, on something like a Nikon F801, something like that. Um, if you spin the aperture ring it will have a hissy fit so you've got to keep it on the lowest aperture and then control it from the body. It's not the most intuitive thing to use. My favourite thing about this camera it's got the advanced and simple button. Uh, I tend to keep it on the advanced because I just shoot an average priority on this. Um, pros, these things are dirt cheap. Um, cons, 
I'm not massive on these grips, like the F4 style grip, I'm not big on it. Uh, the button base controls are very unintuitive, uh, but you know, it would you know, use all the same lenses as every other Nikon camera, so that's always a bonus. Uh, but yeah, you can pick these up for like between like five and 30 quid. So if you, you if you shoot Nikon, you've got full frame lenses and you want to give, um, you're not too sure if you want to go into film and you don't want to take too much risk, F50. Um, one notable downside of my F50 is the film doors jammed shut. I can't open it. So uh, this camera is never seeing a roll of film ever again. But I'd like to talk a bit more about the F50 because the F50 really is the camera that kind of inspired me to go, you know what? There's a bit more convenience to be had here. Um, it has autofocus, it has auto wind, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that big a deal, but it's got a lot of features. It's got metering in it, you can shoot in aperture priority, you shoot in manual, you can shoot in shutter priority, you can do all of that stuff. Prior to that camera, I was using an Olympus OM2000, which is an all manual, all the time camera. And it's a really nice camera to use, and I kind of you know, learned some chops on it, which was really good, but I found myself, because everything was all manual all the time, I found myself not shooting it, which is not what you want in a camera. You want to be able to use a camera. Every camera I buy, I fully intend on using, just some need repairing. <laughs> um, so that's what, the F50 really kind of started leading me down Nikon. So I eventually bought my F80, which passed away earlier this year because the little hooks on the back film door um, snapped. And given how much I use that camera, Yes, I could have taped the film door shut, but it's janky AF. I don't want to be doing that, especially where I shoot weddings as well. Could you imagine the wedding photographer just... <laughs> Sorry guys, just going to change my film. Anyone got any tape? Could you imagine? So in this part, we've talked about the cameras I don't use. And the reason why I think that's important is because it took me a few years to start finding cameras and systems that I actually enjoyed using and that worked for me. Um, I started off, my first film camera was an Olympus OM-10. Uh, lovely camera, it died. It just uh, gradually went. The, I think there's an issue where like the mirror control is electronic and the shutter is electronically controlled and over time that can degrade. It can be repaired, but I paid like 20 quid for it. It wasn't worth doing it. I sold it on eBay in the end. Um, so I started off with Olympus cameras. So I had the OM-10, I had the OM-2000. You know, I could have easily gone OM-1, OM-2. I, the dream is the OM-4, uh, but no, that's too much, too much money. Um, so I started to look for cameras that fitted my needs. And there's a lot of cameras out there that won't do that for you. And the easiest thing that I tend to do when I'm looking for a new camera is I make a spreadsheet. So I do... I kind of do list the cameras down the down the side, and along the top I do like all the features I care about. So things like potentially when I was looking for my A7 Mark II, weight was a big thing because I wanted something that I could build up and pack down again, and it could potentially be small that I could just stick in a bag, but then I can make it bigger, like I've got the battery grip on it now, things like that. So I will split it into categories of features that I want. I will then kind of do some research and find a list of cameras that I think could potentially hit my needs. And I'll start filling that spreadsheet out and going, okay, going, which cameras fit my needs? Um, and that's how I've landed. I say how I've landed. That's how I've landed on one of these cameras. I actually know two of them out of the three. So I shoot three film cameras. I shoot the absolute unit that is the Nikon F5. You will have seen this in a couple of videos by now. Um, I absolutely adore this camera. It is a genuine marvel of engineering. Uh, the amount of stuff they managed to pack into this camera is phenomenal. It's 25 years old. It doesn't skip a beat. Um, it does chew through batteries. This is the first film camera I've ever owned that I've actually had a battery warning come up. Uh, it does chew through them, but then you've got the motor drive, you've got the eight frames a second. It is just ridiculous. This camera is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it is a thing to behold. I'm so glad I own one. Um, when I was looking for this camera, I was looking between this, the F4, and there was a couple of other ones. So the F801S, which I had on loan, I was going to potentially buy that. But there was a few reasons I picked this. One, this I thought was an incredible value for money. So this, before ta import tax, cost me £180. Afterwards, it was about £220, which is still fairly well priced for an F5 in the UK. They're normally about 250 and then upwards, depending on the condition. 
It's a little beaten up, it's got a little bit of paint loss there, but other than that, it works amazingly. I bought this from Japan. Um, it is just absolutely wonderful. So this was £220. This does eight frames a second. It has three metering modes. It's got center, matrix, and spot. Uh, it's got five autofocus points. The autofocus on this is better than the autofocus on my A7 Mark II, which is 20 years its junior. Um, it's just a phenomenal bit of kit. And I think for 220 quid, it is very hard, even with digital cameras, to beat this for value. Yes, of course, you've got developing costs. Yes, you've got that kind of stuff. But if you do your home developing like I do, the prices do come down. Of course, that's that initial investment. But I think this camera is incredible value for money. Reasons why I picked this over the F4, um, it's quieter. This is a virtually silent camera in comparison to those, and especially once you've got a lens on, the dampening on there is really good. Obviously, you heard it with the lens off, so it does sound a lot louder. With a lens off, that eight frames a second, it's like a fly doesn't pass. It's so quiet. Um, I prefer the ergonomics on this. I prefer the, the newer style grips. Uh, I'm not a fan, like I said about with the F50, I'm not a fan of that kind of chunky grip. I like to be able to hold a camera like this. Um, that comes from shooting zoos when I've got a telephoto lens on it. I will just walk around and I'll just have it balanced and the lens just counterbalancing it. Um, I just think the grip on this is really nice. Things I don't like about this camera, I'll be honest, there's only one, there's two things I don't like about this camera. One of which is a stupid thing not to like because I knew that when I bought it. It's not, the, it's not a camera I can just put in my bag. This isn't a camera that I can just put in my bag and carry around with me all the time. It weighs 1.2 kilograms. With the 50mm 1.4, it's probably close to 1.5. With my 28 to 70, it weighs two kilograms. This is a heavy camera, uh, but I knew that going into it, and it was silly of me to think that this would be like my everyday camera. Absolute nonsense. I use this camera for weddings. I use it for pet shoots. Um, if you've been paying attention to my background, these are all filming images I've shot this year. Um, if you've seen, there was one of a Labradoodle running towards the camera. This just absolutely nailed it. It got every single shot, apart from the shots where the dog was within the minimum focusing distance of the lens. And I just think that's astonishing. But yeah, it is hefty. It is heavy. If you want a camera to come around, carry around with you every day, this is not that camera. But if you want something for fast action, for weddings, that kind of stuff, this is fantastic and it's a great value for money. The other thing I don't like about it, and it genuinely boggles the mind, so factory grip, you've got the second shutter there, no controls, no extra aperture and shutter controls. That is absolutely ridiculous. Now, I am aware that I'm complaining about 25 year old camera design, and I'm also aware that this has subsequently been fixed in later versions. So you look at something like the D2, the D3, the D4, they have that, that's fine, but that doesn't help me here. Um, so yeah, two things I don't like about this camera, um, one of which is very silly because again, I knew what I was getting into. Now I move on to the other Nikon. This, in every categorical measurable way, is worse than the F5. This is an F301. It has one metering mode which is centre weighted. It has no autofocus, it's a manual focus camera. Um, it only goes up to one two thousandth of a second shutter speed. The F5 goes up to one eight thousandth. Um, in every measurable way, this is worse than the F5. However, I absolutely love this camera. I paid £30 for this body. Uh, I bought it from Arundel Photographica in Arundel, funnily enough. Um, the viewfinder is fantastic, it's got a split prism in there and it's so easy to focus. Some of my sharpest images on 35mm have been on this camera because you can just nail that focus, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, this is, there is the autofocus version of this which is the F501 but again I imagine the autofocus just sounds like a screeching banshee as do all the older Nikon autofocus cameras. Uh, so I wasn't bothered about that and the price I paid for this. Um, it's plastic, but it has a nice weight to it. It doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel awful. Like the bottom plate is metal, but up the pl the top it's plastic. But you don't really you don't really touch it too much. Um, it does screech at you if you think so. You're going to over or underexpose, which is all right. Uh, just something I had to get used to for a little while. But yeah, I absolutely adore this camera. This is the camera that sits in my bag and just goes everywhere with me if I'm just normally shooting. I absolutely love this camera. The beauty of film cameras is they are a box 
with a hole in them that you put a lens in front of and that's it. They are as good as the lens in front of them, the film inside them and the person behind them. It doesn't matter. Like as long as it does what you need it to do, it's not like today where you've got the megapixel race and all that jazz. As long as it does what you need it to do, that's all that matters. This is the perfect day-to-day -day camera for me. Yeah, an F3 would be nice, and this, you know, it's it's a cheap F3, you know, it's and that's probably a massive insult to anyone who owns an F3. But you you know, you understand the premise. It's that small body, it's an aperture priority camera. I shoot this pretty much exclusively in aperture priority for the most part, with the odd things of like if I'm shooting an image that has a lot of black in it, then I'll meet it for middle ground, do that, blah 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 blah. But yeah, this is just a wonderful camera. I absolutely love it. This pretty much just has the 50mm f1.4 in it all the time, and it just lives in my bag. It goes everywhere with me, regardless of what I'm doing. It's just brilliant. Finally, we move on to the second absolute unit. If we have the camera that can do absolutely everything, um, the one thing it probably can't do as well is resolution. Funnily enough, some medium format images have just shown up. So this is my Bronica SQA. Now, this was not bought based on need. This was bought based on pure want. Um, in the lockdown, I actually got hold of my friend's dad. He was a professional photographer, and I knew he had this camera, and I said, hey, do you mind if I borrow it? And he was like, yeah, crack on. I don't shoot anymore. You borrow it. It's fine. Obviously, there were some concessions, and the main one was if I lost the dark slide, he was going to brutally murder me. But, you know, that's fine. That's to be expected when you're borrowing something like this. Um, shot two rolls through it, well, three rolls after the first one that I cocked up. Four after the first two that I cocked up. Um, and absolutely fell in love with this. Now, earlier, you will remember me saying that the reason why I didn't shoot my OM2000 is because it was an all-manual, all-the-time camera. And that's correct. This, too, is an all-manual, all-the-time camera. This actually has a disadvantage over the R2000 because it doesn't even have a light meter in it. You can buy a metered prism, but I've just got the waist level one. Um, so this is all manual, all the time. No bells, no whistles. Um, it can only go to one five hundredth per second. I have to do everything myself, and I love it. It is absolutely brilliant. I use this for very different reasons to what I would use a 35mm for. I use this to capture... I, I suppose it's still life. I suppose that's what I could, you could class it as. Um, a lot of buildings, a lot of areas. So the challenge I kind of set myself is you get 12 images off of this, and I try and do it to film nine Instagram images. So I'll go around an area, and I'll try and get nine images that I feel will reflect this. And then, you know, that's catering for me, having exposure cock-ups or missing focus or something like that. So that gives me three images as redundancy, or three images that potentially I just don't like as much, but i got a bit of a buffer. Um, this camera is absolutely ludicrous. I paid £250 for this camera with the 80mm f2.8 as well as the 150mm f3.5. This camera is just insane. I absolutely adore it. Um, the scans I get from this camera are phenomenal. I get there are about 36 megapixels there or thereabouts. They are just insane. Um, the amount of detail this lens can capture is just phenomenal. I tend to shoot it pretty much all the time at 5.6. Uh, that gives me enough. I love a shallow depth of field, but it also gives me enough detail there and enough crispness and enough sharpness to be able to warrant the megapixel count. Um, megapixel count. But yeah, this is a stunning camera. This is brilliant. Uh, if you get a chance to get one, I'd highly recommend it. If you are after medium format, these are very reasonably priced. Um, they kind of fly under the radar a little bit when it comes to medium format. It's all about Hasselblad and Pentax and Mamiya. These are brilliant. I absolutely love it. This is a 6x6 square camera and... Uh, the moment after I kind of shot the third or fourth roll, I was like, no, I need to buy this from him. So, uh, yeah, I got this, the 150mm lens. I got a, like a Pelican case kind of thing. Loads of expired film, loads of accessories as well. He sold it to me for 250 quid. And honestly, if we're talking value for 36 megapixels, 36 megapixels, um, for the amount of detail you can pull out of these, it's just phenomenal. Like... Give medium format go, seriously. I hope this was useful to at least one person. Um, <laughs> this I normally structure my videos a bit better and I normally do cue cards and stuff, but this is more just off the car for me, kind of looking at the cameras and using the cameras as a talking point. So apologies if it's a bit rambly. I would have already cut it down in the end. Don't you worry, I've got your back. Um, to that I say goodbye. The cat needs his breakfast. 
at least he's telling me he needs his breakfast anyway. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope this was useful. The main thing I want to finish on, again, is to quote a lovely man who I met in... It's a brewing shop in Fratton. It's in the Fratton Centre. It's all homebrew shop, and he used to be a professional photographer. He used to shoot on cruise liners and develop there and then. We had a wonderful conversation when I started doing home developing, and I was looking for bottles to keep all my chemicals in. An absolutely lovely guy. I can't remember his name for life of me. I'm so sorry. But um, something that he said really stuck with me was, the beauty of a film camera is it's a box with a hole in it. And that's it. Like... My favourite thing about the 301 is the fact that it takes all the same lenses as my F5. Um, I can shoot with those lenses. I love those lenses. Film cameras are as good as the lens in front of it, the film inside it, and the person behind it. I hope you all have a lovely day. I'm going to go feed my cat.